Good morning, everyone, and um, welcome to the final session of the conference. And um, you're probably all aware that um, Contact has a forum handbook. Um, this is now ooh, about seven, seven and a half years old, so it's a little bit out of date. So um, as part of our offer this year, we plan to redevelop the handbook. And you'll know last year we surveyed forums and asked what you would want in the handbook. And what we want to do now really is to check back in a session with you as um, a focus group, interactive session, chance to feedback, just to check that we've understood correctly, that we've heard you, and so that we can develop a, for a forum handbook that's new, that covers how things have moved on really in the last seven years. Because um, I think in the early days and certainly up to then, a lot of forums um, were still wholly reliant on volunteers. And since then, forums have evolved, grown, developed. They now have other funding streams. And um, a lot of forums now have staff. It's about 55% of forums have staff, paid members of staff, and parents get remunerated for being part of strategic groups. So we really just want to make sure that we cover all of those bases, that we give forums a handbook that it helps them to build, grow, develop, evolve, and have those strong foundations in place in which to build on. So we want really just to go back um, look at what was useful in the handbook, look at what needs to be updated, and to involve you in that so that we co-produce it as much as we can. Um, and what we'd also like to do this time is to think about those tips and tricks, those things that would have been most useful in the early days. And we want to add some of those and some of the anecdotal um, sort of evidence and case studies within the, the handbook um, so that it brings it to life really and makes it as useful as possible to new forums and those perhaps who have been around for a long time but might want to go back, might want to do a bit of a refresh, relook at the policies. So that's really why we're here today. As Sue and Lisa are going to do an interactive session, there will be some menti, so you may need your phones. Um, but if there's anything you want to reflect back afterwards that you don't feel you get a chance to, um, we'd be really happy if you could share those with your advisor afterwards. Um, just to say that the session will be recorded and um, will be on our YouTube afterwards. So if you don't want to be seen on screen, please do leave your cameras off. So I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Sue and Lisa and hand over to them and I'll leave you to the session. So please enjoy and thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline. Thanks, Caroline. Thanks. And just to say, uh, Heather's going to be helping us with, um, with the chat as well. Heather is another advisor. Can we go to the next slide, Lisa? Like Caroline said, today's session is going to be informal and just really capturing your views. And Part of that is going to be using Menti. So just as a heads up, um, on your phones or on your laptops, you can go to menti.com and the code will be available throughout the session when we have the in interactive parts. Um, and, and I suppose I was just introducing ourselves, weren't we? So I'm Lisa Aldred, um, Parent Care and Participation Advisor at Contact, and I cover the North West and Yorkshire and Humber. And I'm Sue Menia. I'm the Southwest Regional Advisor. I cover some of the for forums in terms of support, some of the forums in the Southwest, some in the Southeast and Northwest London cluster. Lovely to be here today. Thank you all for coming along. Thank you. Um, so yeah, so whilst every effort has been made to ensure this presentation is as accessible as possible, if there are any issues, please just please just do contact us, either put it in the chat um, or just raise your hand, let us know, and we'll do our best to overcome any barriers you have to participate. And as Lisa said, this is an informal session. You know, we want you to participate how you feel most comfortable. We've got Menti as a way of doing it. You can put things in the chat. You can speak. You know, we've got about 40 people today. So this will hopefully a, a, an opportunity for you to all participate how you want to really. Um, lovely. Thank you. Right. So Carolyn covered some of this about the about the history. As she said, it's the, the, the handbook is pretty out of date now. It was printed in 2015. And as she said, forums have developed considerably since then. And lots of the digital links and the information has been is <coughs> out of date or is not appropriate to how forums actually operate now and how they have evolved over time. And Heather has put a link in the chat 
uh, for you um, if you haven't got a physical copy. I've got, I'm lucky I've been around long enough to have a physical copy here of the handbook, but if you haven't, then just go onto that link and um, you can you can have a look and uh, if you need to refer to sections and things as we go through today. So like Sue's just said, there was originally um, a hard copy of the Parent Care Handbook. I know when I started many, many, many years ago, um, we got um, that hard copy. Um, as times um, are now thinking about the environment, there are some non-negotiables in the development of the handbook. And that's thinking about the cost and the implications of paper copies. So the, the, the new handbook, the updated handbook will be digital um, and there will be some information that needs to go in, such as like the grant and monitoring and finance information and any contractual obligations um, from the DfE so that forums are, are aware of those. So there are some things that will go in, but today's session will hopefully capture the richness and the need of forums for what else needs to go in. Lovely. I've just reposted that uh, link. Somebody's asked for the post to be uh, uh, done again. So if you want to see it, it's just popped up there now. Fine. So as Carolyn said, we, we uh, surveyed forums um, last year to ask them what they thought uh, should be in the handbook and what bits needed to change. So I'm just going to go through those things quickly with you now. Um, so we asked forums um, what, what they thought was essential to go in the handbook what was important, what was nice to have but not essential, and what was not needed. And these are the results. We also did ask advisors and associates working with forums what they thought, but today we're predominantly going to be looking at um, what forums told us. Though I will tell you uh, there's a few interesting things about things where advisors thought it was more important, but I'll go into that afterwards. Um, so uh, some of these are quite are, are quite a lot of them that they're they're a bit longer than we put on here. So I'm I'm going to read them in, in out in full for you. So what we're going to be asking you uh, after this, we're going to be asking you, do you agree? Do you agree with the findings? So in order, these are an order of popularity. Uh, we basically took the bits that were important and very important, put them together, and then we put them in order here of which ones were most important to least important. So in terms of most important, it was the introduction, what, pe what a parent care <laughs> does, what they do, who they work with, et cetera. Next, governance and essential policies, including AGMs. Next, financial management and good practice, managing money, financial safeguards, fraud awareness. Then it was GDPR, for example, collecting and managing membership data followed by roles and responsibilities, for example, chair, co-chair, secretary, treasurers, parent reps, then working in partnership, the LA health structures, co-production, relationship building, other key partners, parent reps and influencing, I told you they're long, <laughs> um, setting up a PC, a parent care forum, getting the basics right, laying the right foundation, legal structures and implications, for example, being unincorporated, a CIO, that's a, a community interest organization and a community interest company um sorry charitable incorporated organization i got it wrong there um a charity etc and then sort of in the medium importance attracting and keeping members developing the team representation diversity reaching underrepresented groups um key strategic work local regional and national landscape impact of a strong forum improving services, change, evidencing culture of co-production, signposting and links to all sources of support, long-term sustainability. And down the bottom is not, not, import, not so important, succession planning, ensuring the future of a forum, additional sources of funding, communications, promotions, websites, social media surveys, regional networks and national network and parent care forums. And lastly, challenges, so groups who work in different ways, um, complementing and not competing, how forums work across services. So those are the uh, main ones. I think, Lisa, we might need to, once we put the mentee up again, we might need to go back to that list just so people can refer to it, if that's okay. So we're now going to go to mentee to find out if you agree with the, um, the, 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 the forums that took part in that survey, if those are the most important to the least important in your view. Okay, so this is the this is what you'll see on your mentee. If anybody's having trouble getting into the mentee, just pop something into the chat. Um, 
and then I'll go back to the questions so that you can refresh your memories. If anybody wants the code again, just pop it in the chat or speak up. And while we're, while we're doing that, um, Jane's put something in the, the chat there about the relationship between um, the contact advisor and regional steering group rep. What does each do? How do they support separately and together? That's a really good comment. So all the comments in the chat will be taken to um, be downloaded and part of considered part of the development of the handbook. Right. So just while you're doing this, in terms of um, uh, the, the advisors and associates, um, some of the most interesting sort of differences really were that advisors and associates felt um, laying the getting the basics right, laying the foundations was really important. Um, and things like keeping um, membership um, developing and succession planning, they thought was more important. And interesting forums put signposting much lower down than um, uh, advisors and associates did. Andrea has made a, a comment as well, saying mm -hmm. that she agrees with them, but don't think they're necessarily in the right order, as the different structures will determine the governance structures and essential policies. Sure. And, and also, um, Jackie agrees with some, but not all. Yeah. Okay. Another difference with the advisors and the associates were that regional networks and the national network um, was much higher um, amongst them than it was in forums, interestingly. Who knows, it might be because forums felt that it was um, uh, information accessible elsewhere or not. So, yeah, so that's just some things to think about. Are we ready to go to the results of the mentee, Lisa? Yep. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> the forums are in accordance with uh, on the on the on this call are uh, um, agreeing with uh, the forum survey. So yes, we've got <laughs> very sort of strong steer there. Is it still going up? No. Yeah, and just to mention as well, this mentee uh, poll will be available for a week after the presentation has finished so you still will have the opportunity to contribute to it yeah yeah um, and if you if you don't agree with the um, findings of the survey from forums we will be asking for what what you think needs to be in in this um, session today so you will be able to add that as well and also pop it in the chat yeah so there's more more comments in the chat, Lisa. Where did we get where did we get to with um because we need to read these out for people to with, with accessibility issues to be able to see these later. Do you, do you want me to read them out? Um that would be great, Heather. Thank you. So um I think uh, I don't know whether we've done this already, but Jane has um highlighted the issue about the relationship between the contact advisor and the regional regional steering group. Rep, how do they support each other separately and together? Um, Andrea has said that she agrees with the priorities, but not necessarily in the, in the right order. Um, and Jackie Watt has also said that um, agree with some, but but not necessarily the right order. Ruth has asked about the um, again about the roles of the contact and and national network, and I think that's an issue that has come up many many times so it is something we still probably need to work on yeah. um we've got a question about templates for essential policies uh, policies in the appendix would be really helpful and save time reinventing the wheel yeah i absolutely agree and Faye agrees with that as well um the difference between the top and the bottom scores isn't that different really is it yeah. that's from elaine and um, Ruth has said, if we're doing something digital, can we have something interactive like a Padlet? And Rose, the last thing Rosemary has said about not having to reinvent the wheel. I'm going to make a note of all these anyway, so we will we won't lose them even if we don't answer the questions directly. Yeah, yeah. And the chat is going to be downloaded and form part of the um, developing the handbook. So yeah. but everything today will be captured, whether it's said or in Mente or in the chat. 
That's lovely. And this might come up later, but just an explanation of what a Padlet is. That's an online kind of um, way of accessing information, isn't it, Ruth? Yeah, and we will, we have that. Yeah, it so it's an online platform that can be accessed by a link. And then whoever controls the Padlet can upload and download stuff. So if, for example, something was to change with a policy, you would be able to easily change that policy over without having to recreate the whole structure again. I don't think we've caught this one. I was um, Elaine said I was going to say it needs to be printable for those who can't read large amounts of information on the screen. And again, that's um, you know something we will consider is if if people need it to be printed. Um, just because we can't print it for everybody doesn't mean we can't print it for people who need it or bits of it. I think okay. that comes up in the digital slide a bit later yeah. as well. That's really uh, helpful. Rosemary said not having to reinvent the wheel. Ruth said some people have limited or no internet access. Actually, that's something we're going to talk about later. Um, and Posan said something about team building may be useful for the developing the team section. Lovely. So shall we go um, Thank on you. to the next one? Thanks for all those um, thoughts. There. Thanks so much. So this is um, the introduction and the content section of the current handbook and the chapters that are within that. So we just wanted to gauge really whether, again, is this in the right order? Are these the right sections? Is there anything absolutely missing? So we're going to ask three questions about the current handbook. And that's what did you find useful? What did you think was missing? And what do you need from the handbook? So there are going to be three questions that we're going to ask on um, sort of uh, are these as well. What we wanted to capture right now is, is this in the right order and are these the right chapters? So we're just going to open that up for a conversation if anybody wants to get started. I think everyone is expecting a mentee there, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted to give a heads up that we are going to cover what's missing, what's needed. Um, but in this one, we just want to know have we got the right chapters already and um, are they in the right order? So this is a free form discussion. <laughs> uh, just to say, I think Jackie has put something in the chat about challenges. Uh, they may be bottom of the list, but if you need help, having a section to signpost to, you know, who you might be able to go to to help with those challenges would be invaluable. And I think that's a really great point. Yeah. Yeah. Feel good. And she's also put, I think working in partnership should be higher as is a core principle to the way we work. And that's something that I noticed in the, um, it, you know, kind of flipping through it. It's co-production wasn't a word back then, you know, it was parent participation. And um, these days, you know, we, we kind of embed co-production in everything we do, how we run forums, how we um, work with other people. So, yeah, that's an interesting point, um, Jackie, to say that, you know, the working partnership is that it would be flip it around the other day and have that as the core principles and getting the basics right. Mm -hmm. um, would we have that there in the in, in the um, getting started bit? It's just yeah. a thought. Uh, just uh, Lisa, Lisa and Sue, there's a couple of people with their hand up. Well, yeah. there's three actually. Oh, Lisa, yes. I, I, Jane, Jane was first. So Jane, if you want to. Yeah, it was, it was just to say that, that we need to make sure that when forums are coming together <coughs> under what a forum is, it's very much about partnership That's and what our yeah. principles That's are, what, our, what, we, what we're all working towards yeah. together. But That's I think it's yeah. also... Yeah. Sorry, sorry, someone else is sorry, Jane. Sorry, so, someone, someone else, else yeah. someone, someone else got there needs to needs to mute their um yeah. their mic. Okay. Yeah. It might be my colleague was also on a, she's on yeah. a call oh, so just, just give me one minute. <laughs> 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 sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of, of our principles of work, how we all work together, but also how we work regionally. So for forums to understand that when they come together, there might only be two or three of them, but that voice from that local area will feed into regional and national and will actually shape what we're doing, that they're not in isolation or even just in a region. They're part of a national network and, and working with contacts in partnership. So I think that needs to be in the getting started as well, the ethos of who we are, kind of our forum family, if you like. Yeah. Thanks, Jane, that's really great. And uh, Ruth was next. So I think it'd be quite nice to have something in here for forums that have been around for a while. 
um, about going back and having an opportunity just to reflect because what we find is that it's very easy to write something right back in the beginning and then three or four years later you're not actually your practice doesn't match what's in your documents if that makes sense because you've evolved and you've learnt as you've developed as a forum so it's not necessarily a bad thing but just about that making sure that you're going back and double checking that actually what you've said in your documentation the way that you're presenting yourself to your members is actually reflecting your practice so whether there could be a chapter in there around supporting forums to be able to do that thanks thank you Ruth. really really important to reflect isn't it um, the next was philomena are you still with us yeah, yeah, sorry, I didn't know if um, you had to unmute me or did I unmute myself? Um, yes, the contact handbook, uh, we, so I, I, I have, have something around succession planning, so because that was down at the end. Um, and when we took off, there was a parent care forum active in our area, but we took off from naught. There was nothing there for us. So we had to build everything from zero. So one of the things that we've decided to do as a forum is whoever comes along next, we don't want the same thing to happen to them. So there should be some stuff that is flexible that you can sort of contextualize for people. So I think the history, the backstory, the 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 choices that you have as to, you know, when when we originally started, we were a constituted group. Um, you know, and then you, you speak to your advisor and you get sent off in all these different directions. And, and hopefully you've you've made a little bit of a network and you can reach out to other parent care forums. Actually, the choice is quite overwhelming. There's a lot of stuff there. So to have it sort of not defined, but to give you a, a sort of roadmap around if this is where you are at a starting stage, these are the options that you have to available to you. And actually, from those options, what you need to do is action X, Y, and Z. You know, later on today, I have a, another meeting with community masters. So, you know, we end up having to talk to all these different people. Um, and, and I do think you do need to rely on something like this. So I, I know I was someone that was very, very critical of the whole old handbook. Um, I said, because, you know, you get your grant and then you get this handbook and it's like, off you go, make a forum. Um, and, you know, you need to be a HR department. You need to be an accountant. You need to be, you know, all these things that when I was in my professional life, I had departments at my office that I went to and sent them to. And then I very quickly realized that all those departments were us. So I think you kind of need to to rip the band-aid off and tell people actually there is a lot of this stuff that you have to do um you know what's the importance of the policies having templates of stuff having things as as a basic starting package um you know when i went into my job in the city and i, I didn't have any sort of high flying job i was a corporate receptionist but we had a, a, a manual that we worked from that laid out what needed to be done on a Monday through to a Wednesday when I needed to send FedExes to international offices. So there's because there's some basics of stuff that you have to do. Then there's some things that are a choice and then there are some things that are built into your long term plan. So actually, I, I think it, it was so I'm really, really supportive of this piece of work because I think it was a, a bit remiss that you're sort of given the grant money and go right off you go do what you want. And I went back a couple of times to people and they were going, well, it depends what you want to do and we can't really force you. And some people are CIOs and some people are CICs and some people are constituted groups. I wanted to know what was the benefit of all of that? What, mm -hmm. what, would, what would make some forums choose to be a kick over a CIO? Yeah. what would choose some what would make some forms choose to remain as so I think there's a lot to be said for contextualizing stuff and giving you a real good starting point Thanks, so, Lumina. so you're saying to contextualize things but then signpost people to where to find out about 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 those different options so that you feel informed to know what choices to make yes but not so much sign the signposting should just be to another chapter in in the handbook everything that the handbook should be the bible 
there should be some then future references so you know to find more out of this speak to your regional advisor they may direct you to community matters they may direct you to a, a contact um, advisor who is also a parent carer forum rep you know there was so much stuff that we had to sort of find out yeah bit by bit it was like picking up breadcrumbs I would have preferred if somebody had just said here's the whole loaf work through it at your own pace yeah and the other one that you've mentioned all those different options another one is being hosted isn't it so as well but yeah thank yeah you very much for that. I've seen that thanks Philomena that's that, that's brilliant um I've seen there's some other things in the uh in the chat here Heather could you take us through those quickly and then I think we need to go to the next section just to keep us time I mean there's lots of um agreement with Philomena <laughs> and I'm sure as advisors we would agree with an enormous amount of what Philomena said as well. I think you really uh, succinctly, um, you know, described what it's like for forums. Um, so just to go through the chat, I think, yes, I think everyone agrees. Um, Sheena's made the point that um, the work of forums has got more complicated over over the years and uh, and again as advisors i'm sure we'd ag we'd agree with that um and the range of tasks and things you're required to do has got larger elaine says there needs to be something about it being okay to change your mind about how you do things as you involve you don't have to do it how you always did so again that's a point about reflection um i think that's about um covers it uh in terms of people's comments that that's fabulous i'm just looking at the time and wanting to try and make sure we cover everything so if that's okay should, should we go to the next section lisa yes yeah. yeah. you know comment. commenting and thinking and putting it in the chat we don't get a chance to read everything from the chat we will be looking at it afterwards but hopefully we can sorry can i just can i just say one more thing yeah. um Hosan has has just said that she also agrees it uh, with some comments earlier about emotional well-being and how important it is um, that there's no preparation for how challenging it can be to set up a forum. And, and again, I think that's a really important point. Yeah, there's a really good point from Liz as well about acronyms glossary in the handbook, um, which we can sort of input now as well. Um, so it, for the first part of the feedback, we want to capture what did you find useful in the current handbook? So what actually did work? when you started or you became involved, what was what was useful in the, the codes um, there at the side in case you've lost it. You can also put them in the chat if you're struggling with Menti or um, Philomena, is your hand just remaining up from before or have you got a new comment? No, it's from before. Oh. I'll try and take it down. We appreciate here for some people, they would have looked at their handbook as they were starting a new forum or they were, um, you know, moving to be um, from being hosted to being independent. For other people, it'll be um, that it was when they become a steamer rep, rep, member rep or it might be when the forum was having challenges and having to revisit policies and procedures. So, you know, any of those stages is relevant. Um, you know, we'd really like to hear your thoughts and ideas. OK, so to everything at first, I had no idea how to run a forum. It was good to have something that quickly became frustrating as so out of date. It wasn't around when we set up. I wasn't aware it was for all. I don't actually remember seeing the handbook before signing up for the session. They're really helpful comments. Thank you. Anyone else? Oh, okay. yeah. And we've got lots of it is good, but not enough detail. We started forum in 2010. Life is totally different now. And so will handbook be the description of the role and remit of the chair. I think it's super informative and covers a lot. And I'm just trying to figure out how to scroll down. Oh, there. <laughs> it's super informative and covers a lot. I think talking to the media is a good topic as this isn't something a lot of people have experience of. It's very useful to dip in and out when setting up and further along, but not enough information on certain things as described by Philomena. Not seen it before today, but needs to be kept up to date. So I think for, 
for the number of forums, because it has been out of date, it's not shared as much as it was possibly in the early days. Um, so if you're new to forums, you might not have come across it as much as those who've been involved for a while. That's very true. Top tips is a great part at the end of each section. It was useful, but found out areas were missing. Example, the role of the treasurer, and it was outdated. Um, examples of good practice, best practice. You can carry on um, inputting um, any things you find useful in there, but shall we go on to the next one now, Sue? Yes, that'd be great. So what we want to find out now is what was missing. So if you could just put any thoughts in there of what you really needed in the handbook and what, what was missing from it. Lovely. And why are they just coming up, Heather? Is there anything in the uh, chat um, that people have put into the chat rather than into Menti? Um, in a section? Just... Um, no. Um, that's there, nice. there, there isn't anything. Uh, there, there was a um, Posen mentioned that the description of the role of treasurer wasn't mentioned, but I think that that, that went into Menti as well. So, yeah, so that's nothing great. else. That's great. Yeah. Thank. What templates? And this has come up quite a lot, hasn't it? The whole templates thing and what um, Philomena was saying about different sorts of organisations needing sort of different sorts of templates, and it's one of the reasons that um, the contact uh, went to partner up with Community Matters Yorkshire just to. Um, have advice on these type, types of things but it'd be interesting to see if people feel that templates would be really helpful yeah we've got a few um a few messages there about templates templates of roles descriptions and policies templates for essential policies engaging seldom reach strategies how to deal with conflict how to work with campaign groups or not yeah. some really good input so when, if it's going to be a digital resource, actual links to other guidance would be really useful. For example, nice guidance, making it user friendly as possible. Unsure, but obviously the world has changed a lot and information should reflect this. Templates for terms of reference, etc. Costs of getting a contact associate. Cultural sensitivity resources. Yeah. Yeah, again, I noticed in the last one it was equal opportunities. And of course, the, even the terminology around that has changed. It's now quality, diversity and inclusion. Uh, two top line needs more detail, should be a Bible with all included, not signposting to other areas as that is frustrating when you are overwhelmed and have capacity challenges. I wanted a choice of what options I had and the details of each. Somebody's mentioned the EDI section, that's the um, quality, diversity and inclusion. Information on understanding difference between contacts and grants, contracts and grants, pay pardon. Really good feedback. Thank really you. useful. Really useful. Helpful resources, examples listed per grant budget category. It needs to be something that is updated to reflect current issues. Guidance on insurance. Yeah, that 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 wasn't mentioned in the last one. And again, really important to be given the complexity of a lot of forums these days and what they organise and do. <laughs> Right. Shall we shall we move on to the next one, Lisa? Just yeah. to keep the time. Thank you. And this one is just really about um is it the right? What you need most. Um what you need most from the handbook. So this is just going to be a word cloud trying to capture the essence of what forums need from the handbook. So just put whatever comments you think about what your needs are in terms of what you want to get out of it. That'd be really thing. That's brilliant support, one-stop shop we've got so far. That's brilliant. Contacts, not just contact. Must haves, clarification. Oh, this is going to be fun trying to read these when you <laughs> 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 I guess. Must, 
uh, simple way to use, jargon buster, empowering, concise, clear information, clear, easy to read, frequently asked questions section, must haves, information guide. And you can put anything that's on there that you agree with, you can put it in again, because um, then that will help the words get bigger to show what the needs are. That's lovely. Can I just ask Heather to go back in the chat and see if there's any other comments while people are putting in there from yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Heather? Yeah, I was just going to um, say that. So, so there are a couple of comments. So Kate, one of our advisors, asked a general question about whether people are accessing community matters policies and procedures because there is a, a knowledge bank that people could use. But the other thing to say is if, if they are and they're not what they need, then it would be great if we knew because then we can adapt them or offer something different yeah. um so jackie uh, has said that signposting to other places within the handbook would be really useful because it's it become it's so hard it be, it's so huge and it would be unmanageable if we didn't have links and signposts um sylvia my comment didn't come through but definitely need hmrc tax info and how to run a payroll as there are a lot of implications to paying people um, and just uh, one um, comment from Kate to say um, that that thanks Elaine yes they are very generic and standard I, I don't really know what Kate's referring to um, I I'll, I'll just speak if that's okay Heather yeah yeah yeah, yeah. sure <clears throat> it was just because <clears throat> we've got that it'd be good to know for the handbook because policies and templates has come up so much in that last bit um if those community because we've obviously grappled with whether we should provide templates and how we should do that yeah. and we we've only got limited resources and and to make that happen and because forums can be all these different legal structures and, and like you were saying at the beginning it's kind of overwhelming with all the choices it like for us it's like how do we provide those policies to you that make them specific it's very hard to make them like specific to every forum um so yeah i was just thinking how does the knowledge bank work for people and i think they are quite generic so it relies on the forum to like tweak it to make it what they need and i guess that can be quite hard especially if you're just starting out yeah. so that yeah there's okay i think we've got actually a section on policies yeah. so i think if everyone holds oh, right. that thought no that's really helpful if everyone holds that thought is is you know do you want loads of templates do you want advice on doing templates you know just have a think about it and we'll talk about that a little bit later um in the section under the bit about policies but yeah that's great uh -huh. to have that in people's minds because we are going to discuss that a bit more later great thank you okay shall we move on lisa yeah that's brilliant thank you so much for those um comments are a real good picture is emerging of what's needed yes. so we've we've touched on this a couple of times in some of the comments that people have had already so that's fantastic and um, so we're thinking about we was talking about how it's going to be digital and thinking about how we consider accessibility so we wanted to talk about um, any accessibility requirements that are particularly important and that covers everything really, because there was a comment earlier about printing. So however this, whatever format this is in, um, maybe it needs to be a format that is printable. There was comments about flip books, with some people may be aware of those, um, or, you know, e easy read. What, what kind of accessibility um, requirements come to mind or are important to people is what we want to pick up here. And this is um discussion section. So if anybody wants to contribute, put the hands up or put the comments in the chat, that'd be really great. Thanks. We did have some comments earlier about the need to print it if necessary. And we did have one from Ruth I meant I know about suggesting Padlet as a uh, option of having something online as a resource. Yeah. So there's oh. lots of sorry, Sue, go on. No, that's great. Yeah just in terms of how people access digital information, has anybody got any preferences or any 
So Jack is saying, could we have some kind of national SharePoint where forums save their policies, et cetera, that they're happy for others to adapt? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, definitely printable, said Posan. Um, Sylvia said compatible with screen reader. Uh, Jane Fitzgerald talked about importance. Plain English is as in reading age. Somebody, uh, Andrew has also said reading age. Anna said easy read version, able to be translated into other languages. Susan said compatible with phone and laptops. Liz said alternative text. Andrew said images as well as words. So they're all really fantastic suggestions. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you. And people can continue to put comments about that or feedback about that um, as we go along. Fantastic. Are you ready to move on now? Yeah. One, yeah, lovely. Thank you, Matt. Okay. Um, this we were going to give ten minutes to this, but we're a tiny bit behind time, and I do want to make sure we talk about um, um, uh, talk about policies and um, governance support, etc., as well. But um, maybe we'll give a slightly less than ten minutes to this. But we're really interested to find out what your top tips or information would be to share with a new forum. Things that you wish you'd known when you started, either as a new forum, as a new steering group member. I think um, it's important. It can be quite a dry document, uh, parent carer um, forum handbook. You know, we want to bring it al alive and to show that there are real people involved in running poor forums. So if you've got mm -hmm. sort of ideas um, of things you would share with the new forum, we'd love to hear about them here and either speak or um, put them in the chat as you wish. And that, and that's things that would hopefully be useful, not run for the hills. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> we don't want that one. <laughs> um, th there are some comments in the chat, actually. Um, some of them refer to po policies um, and, and accessibility. Um, so in some ways, some of them are re referring to the last slide. So I don't know whether you want me to read them out or. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Um, Heather, if you don't mind, thank you. OK. Um... Uh, Jane Fitzgerald um, made a point about video, and I suppose I was going to add something to that, is if it's a digital document, we could possibly have links to people talking about something, um, like a very short clip about how they did something, and maybe that might be a bit more accessible or interesting or meaningful, so I suppose that was um, one, uh, one idea. Um, yeah. Faye has said we need to be able to print section without, without lots of images and that's the issue about ink and uh, you know environmental things. Um, you can have accessible tool built into the document says Melissa. Elaine has said flow charts for procedures to follow would be useful. Susan said that being aware people don't have access to all the programs that are out there and Andrea said consider text and size if you look at um, customers uh, from guide dogs for the blind you can order books in different fonts lines etc that enables visual impairment um, to be accessed uh, Sylvia Jenkins says it will take far longer than expected in terms of your time yeah. um, Elaine make friends with your neighboring forums uh, di dyslexia friendly font uh, the center world is massive and you can't do it all at once says Jane and I think buddying up with another forum would be really helpful. Um, Anna says accessibility, be aware of text and colours. Um, sorry, there's, there's such a lot of comments. There, there, there is, I'm, I'm a bit worried about taking up all the time. So yeah, no, that, that's fine. Well, as, as Lisa said earlier, we're going to be, you know, really looking properly at all of these. You know, it's, it's, it, we can only really give people a sense of uh, what's happening that's a really interesting one about the budding up with other forums because it's something we're hoping to do as part of our contract is to have like coaching you know forum to forum type support so that's um interesting to think that 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 person who suggested that is saying you know for a new forum that would be that might be really useful so that might actually um, fit in with other things i think you're right heather i think we've got too many um things there but this is absolutely brilliant to have these top tips and with you know your permission, you know we want, might include some of these as you know quotes and things in the in the in the um, in the uh, book itself. And I love the idea of having little videos. I think that would make it much more meaningful, uh, as as you said, Heather, um, to, uh, to to other forums starting out. Lovely. So shall we shall we move move on, um, Lisa? Thanks so much. Great. for Some really, fantastic really stuff good. there. Oh. 
Oh, there we go. I forgot it was going to be a, a Betty. Sorry, most people put them in the chat. Right. Okay. So yeah, so one, one of the things we talked about is community matters um, as being the go-to for governance support. But you know, we also did just want to know: do you access support from other places? So we'd be really interested to know where forums are getting support from apart from from contact yeah some i think somebody mentioned nice earlier about signposting to different places um things like that or your your local cvs your community voluntary service yeah what yeah. other services have you found useful yeah i know some of the forums in the southwest use an hr company that one of them recommended and then a lot of them have started using the same one We've got a couple of comments on local CVS, the NMPCF website, other forums. Um, just to mention as well, the top tips page will still be there. So if you wanted to add anything into the menti about top tips, that would be really, really great. Great, thanks. Send us local information advice service. That's an interesting one there. The host, the host one is an interesting one, isn't it? Because some forums do get an enormous amount of support from the host organisation they're from in terms of HR or reach or comms or staff. Council for Disabled Children, Partners in Local Authority and Health, IPSIA. I'm just going to read one out of the chat that I've noticed. Um, if you aren't enjoying it anymore, Elaine, if you aren't enjoying it anymore, it's time to walk away. Don't be an eat or. And someone has asked afterwards, what's an eat or? <laughs> and I think I can answer an eat or, meaning somebody who's a bit um, focusing on the negative, not being solution focused. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's about, you know, trying to uh, be a positive force, isn't it? And we've got the um, contact advisor and Novo National Council for Voluntary Organisations. Oh, I don't know that one. Oh, is that NVO? Might be NVO. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, of course it is. Yes. That's fantastic. There's a lovely one here from Sylvia. Peer support. We have an hour session in our termly regional meeting <clears throat> devoted to achievements and issues for PCI player and player forums and specific help needed. So that's talking about getting that support from other forums and from your region and your regional advisors, national network rep. We have a contract with a HR advisor as no one on board with HR expertise and we've got our committee. Um, Fantastic. Sandy asked again. Love it. And a PCF Facebook page. And this can be support about anything. So it can be about policies, challenges. We've got Sandy asked again. Yeah. There's another one here um, answering a previous question, how to apply for grants and funding. 17 and a half doesn't go far these days. I think that's a thanks, Melissa. That's a comment really from from earlier about things that might need to be covered in the forum. But it's an important one. I don't think we covered that earlier. OK, yes, I'm sorry. We can't. It was fantastic to get all this input, but we, can, we can't cover all of the um, comments in the chat. But we, as I say, we will be looking at these and mm -hmm. to the next session section, Lisa. Right. So we just we just put this as wide as possible, because as we covered, and as Kate was talking about earlier, um, you know, the advisors aren't uh, contact advisors aren't experts in governance and, you know, forums have got much more complicated. So we would be interested to, um, to, to know what your thoughts on policies are. Um, we had we asked forums uh, in that survey for a list of policies they thought we should cover. Um, the ones that are in the for the handbook now, um, I won't list all those because there were loads of them, but the ones that were in the forum, in the, in the forum handbook, were code of conduct <laughs> and conflicts of interest, equality and diversity, safeguarding, data protection, this is before GDPR, social media, uh, financial controls policy, expenses, things like childcare, et cetera, one-off payments, honorariums, batches. So a lot of that has changed. <laughs> So, yeah, it'd be really useful to uh, have your thoughts on this. And again, so your, your thoughts about the support we give on policies and procedures and governance now through Community Matters and whether that's meeting your needs, whether you think that could be different, whether 
um, you need something else. So really love to have your thoughts on this. So far, we've got a list of what's needed. We need a, a list of must haves. What is important first? I guess what you mean there is what is most important when you're setting up first, which are the key policies and procedures you need. And with an appreciation that over time, forums need different ones as they evolve. Um, Philomena, would you like to? Um, yeah, so one of the examples that we can use here is, um, you know, because there wasn't much guidance in the beginning, when we went to, to have conversations around starting to become a, a kick, um, and we were looking at, at our uh, constitution at the time, Community Matters said to me, oh, the constitution that you have at the moment, he said, it's for a group of people that really wouldn't be more than three and wouldn't be handling money more than £5,000. So immediately, the one that had been chosen for us or had been given to us wasn't the right one from the beginning. And I don't know who gave it to them because I wasn't around in the very early days. So what I was saying was that if there was sort of like a basic package, so if you are going to just be operating with the £17,500 DFE grant and you intend to have a steering group or a management committee or something, this is a suite of policies. This is a basic package of what you need to do to operate in your first six to 12 months. And then, you know, again, there'd be a separate one. So and if you've decided that you think you might want to be a kick, then these are what you need to have a kick. You must ensure you have X, Y, and Z. Again, it was very, very breadcrumby, having to go across and picking things up. And it, it was very hard because a lot of what we got was, well, it depends. It depends on what you do here and it depends on what you do there. And actually being advised to then go and speak to your local association of volunteer services, most people didn't know what a parent care forum was. So they'll go, oh, we don't really know how that operates. So actually they might have their own governance. So I think in a way it would be really helpful if there was a list of um, people, you know, uh, nominated suppliers, agreed people that when you were speaking to them, they understood what a parent care forum was um, and what your needs and what your restrictions are as such. Yeah, um, that's really great, Philomena. I wonder if there's any other um, experiences that people have had of going to Community Matters, positive or negative, in terms of did it meet your needs? You know, did they did did um, they help you set up? Did they did you come get the policies and procedures or the governance structure that was right for you? That'd be really useful. Just to read out some of the um, inputted comments. Thanks. How to know if you've written a good policy why the policies are so important to protect you and the importance of policies because they put a lot of people off because this isn't what you get involved in the forum for. Yeah. Um, the difference between essential policies compared to it would be good if you have one. The order of priority, threshold to getting the policies approved. Somebody said that their local law centre checks out the policies. That's interesting. Oh, that is interesting. There's um, a comment from Jackie in the chat saying, I'd like contact to offer to go back to new peace forums one year after started, they have started to provide a health check on their policies and governance to offer guidance and advice on anything missing or to answer, enhance what they're doing. That has come up for the idea of a health check, you know, yeah. as forums evolve. Yeah. It's a really good, really good um, idea. The threshold to getting the policies approved needs to be lower. I'm not quite sure what that means in terms of getting it approved. Does anybody, does the person who wrote that want to um, comment? You don't have to if you don't want to. Hi, yeah, it was me. Um, sorry, I... No, it's all right. <laughs> it's <laughs> right. So I have to type it in again and it still doesn't make sense. Um, yeah, it's it, it goes on to the from the, the point about a lot of people not wanting to engage with the for, um, the, the policy. So you've got a new team of people enthusiastic about creating a forum and then, you know, um, the big policies come along and they're like, oh, why do we have to do this? It's just really, really hard to get them to understand that 
its importance and that we need to have the governance, our, our, our governance structure in place. Um, and I think, you know, if there was a, a picture or I don't know, some way of being able to get communicate across why we need to do this and to make it as easy as possible, um, just so that there's, you know, people can get on and do those things because we had people walk off because they didn't want to get involved in this because they could see there's so much administration. So, you know, it's about trying to make that admin as easy as, as, as it possibly can be with policies. Yeah, that's a really that's a really brilliant point. And and uh, some of the forums I've heard is that they thought, oh, we still, you know, we didn't get in, th in this to do policies, so they didn't do the policies. And then, some, of course, something happened, and they didn't have the policies to refer to, and they had to go back to it. So it's a real chicken and egg situation, isn't it? It's really difficult um, to prioritize those things. These are all really brilliant. I'm conscious we're getting really near time here. Um, but, um, you know, these are absolutely brilliant um, suggestions. Has anyone got any anything else they really want to say? And just to say we are going to finish on time, but Lisa and I are here to chat if you want to chat anything afterwards. And we and with your permission, we'll carry on recording. Um, if there's any other things that people feel that they haven't talked to or they want to talk to us about in a bit more depth. depth. But, yeah, is there anything um, that people anyone would like to share as a last thought or idea or something that hasn't been covered? And I just wanted to say there's a couple of things in the chat. Um, Lovely. Melissa, Thank you, Heather. Uh, Melissa's highlighted um, about conflict of interest and how that is a big issue. And Liz has posted a lovely little um, pictogram which looks at process, policy and procedure and how they relate to each other. Um, so those are just the two most recent comments. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, I think I think we'll leave it there. That's been a, I've so enjoyed this session. It's been absolutely fascinating and brilliant to get your input today. Um, and you know, I really think this is going to help us to provide um, a guide, a guide that's going to be more helpful. We want, you know, we we want ask your forum for their forum members for their views. If you think of things afterwards, please pass them on to your advisor. And we will put that into the mix if people are interested in being involved. So that would be great. But thank you so much for giving up your time today to do this, which has you know, been a very useful session. And it's, a, it's been a useful but out of date uh, document. We hope it's going to be something that's going to be you know, really useful for everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.